I can't wait to meet you, to hear your stories, let you know that you're not alone, inspire you to never give your dreams away. I don't know you yet, but I care about your future. It's been a rough road for me to get to this point. Living on the streets as a homeless teenager wasn't easy, but the thought of meeting you motivates me not to give up. My message will be simple, but learning it wasn't. I'll see you soon. Roy. He was throwing her out of the apartment that we were in and I remember we were all in the room and we were scared and crying and I remember mom calling out to me for me to help her. I didn't want to go. He slapped her. Somehow she went to the ground and he grabbed her by her hair and was pulling her down the gravel. One night we finally come home and my dad's supposed to be gone. Um, and we walk in the house and everything is cut up. We were all scared. Sarola, a pastor for many years, disciplinarian for other years, and I'm playing. Boy, oh. touch him, boy, right, come on. <laughs> Hi, my name is John Sarola, and uh, I'm married to Doris Sarola. I met Roy uh, through my wife. And then, before I knew it, he was living with us. So I didn't, I said, well, uh, hmm, okay. I did not need a conversation to talk with my husband over it. He knew that if it was necessary, then that was fine with him too. We appreciated all that the Lord would do for him. I knew he needed help. He was hurting, not only bottle-wise, but mentally. He had his little brother with him. He knew he needed to take care of him. And as he came to the church, he appealed. And I just took him in and knew that that was the best thing for him. I saw times where he would be very sad. And I saw him to where he didn't know anymore that what he was to do, but he knew he had to take care of his brother and see what he could possibly achieve. And I was happy to do that. Hey, you all there. <laughs> and I learned a lot from you all to be a better person. Oh, thank you. And I love y'all living there, even though we were so many of us. But hey, it was okay. It was okay with me. I didn't, I didn't mind it. Remember, I gave you my hair to put oh. on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rosa mother of Roy Juarez Jr. I first met uh, Roy's dad in high school. I guess you could say he was my high school sweetheart. I could say I loved him. Or if I didn't love him, maybe I liked him, but then I grew to love him. When we were in high school, he broke up with me. The next morning, he took me out of school and he took, took me into an alley. And he kept me there the whole day. I was crying and crying and crying that to please let me go. And he kept me there until I kind of convinced, uh, I said, okay, I'll go back with you. That really should have raised the flag. I guess I didn't really see it, know it at that time since I was so naive. I thought, you know, it's love because he's doing this for me. And once I graduated, we wind up getting married. Married to Roy, 
It was a very hard, difficult life, and it actually was on our anniversary of three months that I got hit for the first time. He beat me up because he wanted to go out with his friends. And this is where the journey begins that uh, it seemed to have never stopped. I tried to, to leave and ask my, my mom and dad if I could come back home. But being the, his, the Hispanic tradition is like, aguanta la vara means, you know, you, got, you wanted to get married, now you have to take it and deal with it. So I had no choice but to, to stay because I had no job. Um, I was just a homemaker. I wind up saying, well, maybe I could change him. Uh, maybe I could change him and the change never came. Hi, um, my name is Danielle and I am Roy's little sister, the nine-year-old in the story. So the house behind me is one of the I guess most horrific experience I had um, with my father. Being older now, I can definitely see how my childhood was taken. I never really understood it until recently. It sucks. It sucks because it just sucks. Because it wasn't my fault. And I didn't ask for that. And then I remember one time um, when he got in the bed with her, she had, I guess she was awake and just waiting for him to get there and she was feeling brave. She turned on the switch and she started yelling and she says, get the F out, get the F out. And he, was, he tried to pretend like he was asleep the whole time. He got really pissed off and I remember that the fight went into the kitchen. Dishes started breaking, things were being thrown against the wall. My mom's screaming. I never want my kids going through something like this. And they never have, and they never will. Never. Good morning, Grandma. Good morning, Mijo. What are you doing? Just having a cup of coffee and some cookies for the breakfast. What, what are you I'm trying you? to uh, take care of my, my, my waistline. <laughs> my name is Josefina Hernandez Ramirez. I remember she, she was passing through a hard time. Uh, she was here one time when she talked to her daddy, and she told her, what happened? And I told her, Mija, I'm not going to tell you to leave him or not to leave him because you have to make your own decision. So if you don't want to live the life you're living, then you, you have to leave him if you want to. But I'm not going to tell you because I don't want you later on to come and tell me, well, you told me to leave him and so and so and you know. So you have to make your own decision. But she did call the Amy, Mama Amy, would to call the police on, on Roy Sr. Uh, sometimes for a lot of, uh, you know, every time that uh, he would, I uh, guess, try to hit her or something. I didn't know about uh, Roy uh, Sr. did to, to you, Roy about, you know, how he treated you. And uh, I did, I always, I remember when I went to the meetings, I would get teary eyes, you know, I felt bad, you know. 
And uh, but I'm glad. I'm glad that, that you didn't give up, and everybody's doing fine thanks to Pastor Doris and all the help that you got. And uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to her for what she did for you. And I guess you that were there with her, you know, she's like a second mom to you. And I'm so grateful for her because I and that I'm the grandma. I couldn't do as much as she did for you all because, like I tell you, I also had my situation too. It hurt me. I got emotional. I felt bad. But I also... I'm glad that they went through a bad situation, but I'm happy because they all came out. Good people, good kids. Nobody went to drugs or the girl went to prostitution or, cult or things like that, bad things. They all, they all came out good, good children and they did it something out of their lives. Roy, I'm glad for him because he learned from what he went through and now he's trying to help other children. If they're in their situation or worse, you know, not to give up. Grandpa, what? Who's your favorite grandkid? You are, Rico. <laughs> See? Learn from Grandpa. Goodbye. <laughs> Roy was always really compassionate uh, as, as a child and he used to drive me nuts. And I think really the reason why it drove me nuts now that I think about it, it was just because him being so forgiving and so loving he never carried that hatred in him that I always carried and that anger that I always carried and I hated him for that. I wanted him to be angry. I wanted him to hate for everything that had happened. I'm Tammy Wattis. I'm Roy's sister. She would pin me in between my father and her. Um, so I guess he wouldn't hit her as much. But of course, as the years went through, um, he didn't care that whether I was there or not and what's, what hit her. She started chasing him. So of course I was scared because we were going really fast and uh, he made a turnaround where he's facing us and we're facing him. He starts coming towards us. There's no other way to go. Um, he couldn't go around us, so my mom's still parking there and I'm screaming at her to, to move out of the way and she's not budging and then she starts going off towards his way. And I guess when he saw her driving towards him and he's driving towards her, he stopped. Um, I can only imagine that he stopped because I was in the car. and. Um, he stopped and then my mom stopped and I remember getting off the car and going to talk to him and of course I was scared I was crying I was talking to him and and then I don't remember what we were talking about but I do remember coming back to my mom's car and telling her something and her getting mad at me because she was saying that I always take his side about 15 and a half 16 years old um, I started uh, staying um, here and there with different friends. Everybody was scattered everywhere. And by this time, I just had the attitude that I don't care about anybody, anything. I think the only reason why I stayed in school because it gave me somewhere to go. And it gave me a place uh, to be normal. And it gave me a place to eat. 
I started working for a human development company and that's where I learned a lot about myself and why I do the things I do. My boss at the time helped me understand that I need to accept the sorry I was never going to get and just move forward. I've, for I've forgiven my mother now. It took many, many years. I think I did it more for myself than I did it for her. But as I did it for myself, it healed our relationship. I don't hate my father. Everybody has their own problems. Everybody has their baggage that they come with, but it's the way you choose to deal with it. And sometimes when you're in front of your kid, you have to put a mask on and do what you need to do for them and worry about your stuff later. You need to pay more attention to your kid. You need to love your kid more than you love your boyfriend or your husband um, because you are the only one who can protect your child. Um, and if it's something that you cannot physically and mentally do, then allow that child to be with someone who can give them that. I have a clo closer relationship with my brother Roy. So there was one day that uh, he was in sixth grade and I was in seventh and his friends come to me and telling me that this little boy is picking on him. So there I go, I told that little boy something, then I go to him and I'm so angry at him and I'm yelling at him and I'm telling him, why don't you say anything? Why don't you stick up for yourself? And then of course I think that boy hit him because I'm like, nobody's supposed to ever hit you, only me kind of thing. And um, so I said, you need to stick up for yourself. And he just, uh, just told me, you know, that God was gonna fight his battles. And even more that angered me because I wasn't in religion as he was as a child. And I would, and I, it just enraged me and I just yelled at him. I'm like, well, God's not here. And he goes, well, he said you, didn't he? And even more, I wanted to wring his neck. <laughs> what I think about my brother's work that he does across the country, I believe that he was meant to do what he's doing. Um, I think that is his passion. I think that's just something he, he's meant for. He's always had a compassionate heart. He's always been forgiving. And that's part of the reason why I always hated him when he, we were younger. <laughs>the most awareness that I was homeless was anytime I had baby Ray. Because I knew that when I got him, that he would always have to leave. Because families didn't want to take all of us in because we were too many mouths to feed. So they would, we had to break, we had to break up. Like he went somewhere, Danielle went somewhere. Um, and if I was lucky, I went somewhere. And I remember one family saying, uh, yes, Roy, baby Ray can come, but he can only stay for one night. And I was so excited that I was gonna have him for one night. So I didn't waste a moment with him. Man, we ran around outside. And um, I remember cooking him whatever he wanted that was in that house. And we watched the same um, cartoon DVD over and over and over and over. But I remember looking outside. I remember seeing this, the, the sun was going down. And I knew exactly what that meant. That meant that my reality was the next time that sun was gonna rise, he wasn't gonna be there. And what breaks my heart is the fact that there's an estimated 1.6 million homeless teenagers in this country. And I know what many of them go through because I've been there. So the idea of, of college or a career, of, of that life is gonna get better, that could be the furthest thing 
from their mind. I'm trying to find the kids that no one wants, to tell them that someone cares so that they don't give up. Let me share something that I've learned about life. I've learned what we do have control over. Because in life, we have control over how we allow situations to affect us. We have to be better and never better. We have to be the change that we want to see in our homes, in our communities, in our school, in this nation. We have to be that change. How you doing, everyone? I'm Danielle, and I'm the nine-year-old in the story. And I'm Baby Ray, and I'm the two-year-old. So, uh, growing up, I remember living at my wonderful pastor parents' house. Um, you know, my brother would always, like Danielle said, be creative with, with us. And uh, I remember one memory specifically, and I keep this close to my heart. I, I um, don't think I've told you either. Every night before we would go to sleep, uh, he'd always sing me this uh, church song, um, and that would basically put me to sleep and it would put me at ease and uh, it's just something that I've, a, a song and a memory that I've put dear to my heart. So, I mean, without further ado, uh, let me go ahead and welcome the man of the hour, my mentor, my, in, my inspiration, uh, my parent, and my brother. So, please welcome Roy Waters. And so what I would like to do today is before we actually go outside and do this book signing, is I would like my siblings to come up here. And this has always, always been my dream. So I'm going to ask that um, if they're willing, and I pray that they are, that my mom and my stepdad, who I love dearly, will come stand to our left. And my dad, my biological dad, will come stand to our right. We have wasted too much time, and life is too short. We love our parents. And this is why the book was written. Because if I can help families have this again, this is forgiveness. We may not be there completely, but we are well on our way to be able to stand on this stage together. Thank you for being here, and I hope that you enjoy what you read. And my family, I love you. I love you.
don't look that. Just look at the cake. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is gonna be right here. Here you go. There you go. Because I can put it there. Here you go. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, baby Ray. Happy birthday to you and many more.